So joining me now is the White House Deputy Chief of Staff, Jan O'Malley Dillon, who was, of course, the President's 2020 campaign manager and knows all the nuts and bolts of this campaign to come. Uh, are we expecting to hear the President make his 2024 run official this week in Wisconsin, maybe in Florida? How aggressive would that be? Hi, Andrea. It's great to be with you. And as you've heard the president say, he intends to run for re-election. But right now, he's focused on delivering the State of the Union last evening and being in Wisconsin today, talking about how uh, his economic vision is going to rebuild and continue to rebuild this country so it works better from the bottom up and the middle out, not just the top down. And I think you'll see that today. You mentioned he'll be in Florida tomorrow talking about Social Security and Medicare. And, you know, you saw from him last night, he was so focused focused on talking about the issues that matter to the American people, and he's going to continue to do that as he crisscrosses the country. Does the success that's, you know, very apparent from all of the reporting, all the reactions of the way he was delivering that speech last night and the way it was crafted, does that indicate that you might have some momentum and that you might, as you're adjusting whatever decision you make, that you might make that announcement sooner rather than later? Well, I think you saw last night, as you know, quintessential Joe Biden. And he talked about a lot of the themes that you heard from him over the last two years that you did hear from him before he even got into office, that there was real progress that's been made, but there is still more work to be done. And I think what was most clear about what you heard last night was that he was so optimistic about what's ahead of us, about getting the job done and being able to tackle the challenges the American people care about with anyone who wants to come seriously uh, to tackle those challenges and have that conversation. So, you know, we're going to continue to do that work. We're going to continue, as he would say, tell the story about how this historic progress that's been made over the last two years really impacts people's lives and makes that very real and clear uh, every day. I know a lot of people were critical during the 20. 22 campaign during the midterms that the party did not put enough effort into Florida. Is the trip to Florida this week an indication, despite the landslide victory of Governor DeSantis and that big loss, that you think you can play in Florida should he decide to run again? You are really pushing the limits of the Hatch Act over here, uh, Andrea. But look, I would say, you know, the president's been to Florida several times as he's uh, been in office, you know, a number of those times uh, really coming in to be with the community, to be with Governor DeSantis in times of real tragedy uh, on the ground there. Um, you know, at the same time, he's a president for everyone. And talking about Social Security uh, is what he did last night and about his uh, hard stand to make sure that he is not going to let anything stand in the way of protecting Social Security and Medicare for the American people. You know, he's in Wisconsin. He's going to talk about that today. He's going to talk about that in Florida. Uh, he's going to continue to talk about that, as you heard him say last year. And I think fundamentally um, what you're seeing, what you heard from the president is that optimism. And he's going to take that everywhere he can across this country and really tell that story about how people's lives are, are being made better by a lot of the work that's been done over the last two years, but that there's still more work ahead of us. Did he expect the level of heckling that he got last night? It was unprecedented from the Republicans. Well, look, I think obviously um, he has seen some of the extreme elements of uh, the Republican elected officials uh, over the course of the last year. You know, I think he was also, though, buoyed by the fact that last year um, the American people said they didn't want extreme voices, that they didn't want that polarization. They wanted people to get the job done and deliver for the American people. And so I think you saw from the president, he was laser focused on, on what he has in front of us to deliver for the American people. But he also was very clear off the cuff in the back and forth when he needed to that he was going to stand strong uh, and he was not going to allow political gamesmanship to get in the way of what he sees as the most critical path forward of building this country and the economy to work better for the American people and building that middle class up. Did he practice for that kind of ad living going off prompter in such a big moment? You know, look, the president is someone who has been in big moments more times than I could even uh, imagine uh, in my life. And I think he was prepared uh, to deliver and speak directly to the American people. And that's what he did last night. And I think he did that from start to finish. I think you saw in the president the optimistic, steady leader that this country needs that has brought us through an extraordinary, challenging time that has delivered even in the face of people believing that might not be possible and being clear that there's more 
more work to be done. And I think that's what he was focused for, uh, and that's what he delivered last night. How would you describe the relationship with Speaker McCarthy? Can they work together? Well, I think, you know, as you saw both from the president and from Speaker McCarthy, they had a frank, cordial discussion at the White House just a bit ago. You know, and the president has made clear he's going to continue to work across the aisle wherever possible. And he's going to take people at face value. And if they want to come to the table to have uh, a good, constructive discussion, the president made clear last night he's going to put his fiscal plan out later in March. He expects that the speaker and the Republicans do the same. And he wants to have a conversation about that. And do you expect, from watching Speaker McCarthy's reactions, at times he tried to shush his more outspoken members, does that give you some confidence that he might be a voice of reason on the debt ceiling and some other issues as they get closer to crisis this summer? Well, look, I think the president has shown that wherever possible, he's going to find people to work with. In a 50-50 Senate, uh, we were able to produce historic achievements for the American people. And he's going to continue to search that out and find ways where he can work together. And he's always going to be looking for that. And I think that being able to build consensus and coalition has been a bedrock of the president his entire career. And we expect to see that moving forward. There were some hints, I thought, in the language last night about police reform. Uh, last year, of course, the deal breaker was qualified immunity for the police, and that was the resistance from Senator Tim Scott. Now it's likely that he's going to run for president himself, and it might make it much harder to get that. Would the White House consider settling for less than, than the full loaf, as they did on guns, as a first step on police reform after the tragedy of Tyree Nichols? Well, I think you heard from the president last night as he uh, talked about how important it is to find a path forward to keep our communities safe, to tackle guns, to not allow what happened to Tyree Nichols to happen to any other family. I thought that was an incredibly poignant moment uh, from the first lady's box last night. And, you know, obviously, again, the president knows that this is this is not easy. Legislating is not easy. Tackling challenges that are hard, that are hurting our communities and making people feel unsafe, police reform, we have to find a path forward. And he is going to find uh, whatever path there is. He's optimistic that it's possible. I would go back to last year when nobody believed gun reform would be possible at all. Decades and decades of not finding a path forward, even after extraordinary tragedy. Uh, and we found a way. So I know the president has faith in that. He hopes that we don't continue to have to have the tragedies that uh, families have had to navigate and that there must be a path forward. And he's going to continue to find it. And mentioning the way black and brown parents have to train their children, teach their children, you know, to deal, to interact, how to interact with police on a national platform like that. Uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, it is something that I think he spoke to so poignantly, but it was important for him to say and for us all to know. Uh, and it's also incredibly important, you know, and I think the president knows this better than anyone else, that he understands how important it is to not just talk about even at this big stage, a big piece of legislation, we have to talk about what's happening in people's lives and the impacts in their lives and families. And for communities of color and families of color that uh, have real concern and how do we do something about that? And for him uh, to continue to speak out about that, I know that's a top priority. It always has his entire career and he's going to continue to do that. Jen O'Malley Dillon, it's great to see you today. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.